So every shoot is getting more and more night for marriage. <laughs> so we get up at four o'clock, we drive to this place we're shooting. It is a freaking plantation. Absolutely beautiful. We have a house, we have a pool, we have a pool house, we have a grove of trees. Beside us was a corral of Angora goats. Beside that was a corral of llamas. So I thought that's nice enough, the kids, you know, the animals there. Through the grove of trees is my motor home, the moho, where everybody comes and that's where I keep them happy and give them bagels and tell stories so that they don't realize they've been there for nine hours and I said it would be about two hours. <laughs> you know, everybody comes, it's a beautiful day, it's a beautiful place, everybody's really happy and calm. I have cast this one woman who has three kids, and she brought her neighbor who has three kids. When I met her, she was so into this, this is gonna be the best day ever. When I get on the walkie and they say, you know, she's here, I go up to meet her, she gets out of the car, slams the door. I knew this was a mistake. She was like on me all day. She was driving me freaking crazy. Cause you know, in a situation like that, one bad apple can start to ruin everything. So she's like, why don't they shoot the kids? Why can't you get them just to shoot the kids? I said, let me go up, let me go up and see what I can do. I drag myself up there, I go up to Nell. She looks like she's fallen out of a plane. She's like, just keep them happy, just keep happy. I was like, oh good God. So I'm going back through the trees and I hear blood curdling scream. Ah, 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 ah. I'm like scary to death. I'm like, oh my God. I run through the trees. Oh my God. I come out all six kids. Ah, are like tears projectile and they're just screaming. The one mother's like white as a ghost, beast woman from hell, the one that's been giving me hell, is red as a beat. And I'm like, I'll go up to her, what happened? What happened? You want to know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. A llama got free from its crown, came over here and fucked an Angora goat to death in front of the kids. <laughs> I was thinking, did she say fuck to me? <laughs> What? A llama got out of its corral and came over here and fucked an Angora goat to death in front of the kids. And I'm like, I turn around, two feet from me is this Angora goat, a tongue hanging way out of the Blood everywhere. <laughs> and the kids, wow, wow, wow. And the mother says to me, you know, what am I supposed to tell them? I'm like, <laughs> I was like, we did not cover this in film school. So I'm like, oh God, they're panic stricken. So I get on the walkie talkie. Nell, can you go to channel two? <laughs> Hi, Nell, this is Michael. We've had a llama break free from its corral and fuck an Angora goat to death in front of the real kid. Can you tell me what to do? She's like... Oh, God, Michael, I love you. You are so funny. I was like, now, listen to me. I am serious as a heart attack. We have had a llama get out of its corral and fucking and going to to death in front of the kids. I finally, it took about nine times, and finally she's like, all right, just get, remove the kids. I'm like, so I get the screaming, crying kids in the moho. The PAs come running down with the big garbage bags, lift the goat up and carry them away. I said to the kids, I want to tell you something. Let this be a cautionary tale. <laughs> when that quarterback asks you to go out neck in the park after a football game, this could be you. <laughs>